Well, I hope you liked uh, and enjoyed the chapter um, with a tutorial to create these rocks. Um, for me, to be honest with you, it's very, very interesting um, to work with our material, with our items and products, because uh, usually as the CEO of the company, I'm not too close to the um, products. I'm of course developing new items in our new items um, team, but I don't work with them on a daily business. So it's it's really, really cool for me to see how good some of these items um, work in, in real conditions. Um, for example, I'm absolutely happy with our rock molds because they, um, yeah, it, it makes it possible to, to create such rocks, even for me. So it must be very simple and a very, very good product for beginners as well as for experts. If even I can create rocks like this, um, that's, that's great. It's really fun to experience this, this video tutorial for me too. So I hope you like it too. I'm, I'm really um, having fun here. <laughs> well, next step, we want to create the artificial water here in our small landscape diorama. Um, therefore, you have to use um, the water drops, especially the water drops colors we are using here. They are very hot when you work with them because they need 170 to 180 degrees. So please make sure you wear some leather gloves or something to pour them out of the glass. Before you use them on your layout, um, please try these gloves to um, handle your, your glass and check if they are heat resistant enough. Um, for me, the problem was I um, chose some leather gloves that uh, were not too good at the beginning. So I um, tried to pour the water drops easy into the lake and I had to um, try it again because I couldn't um, hold the glass for a longer while because it was too hot. So that was really a pity because um, it was not easy to, um, to pour it and if that happens to you during the process that might cause a very bad um, lake in the end. So please make sure up front that your gloves are heat resistant enough. Just try it with the hot um, glass and try if you can hold it for a longer while to pour the water in here. If not, choose uh, different gloves, of course. So be careful, it is, it is hot, it's a very hot um, item of <laughs> double um, sense and um, it is, it's big fun. So um, prepare everything up front, I will show you how to use. Um, second of all, in this chapter I will show you how to create this lake as well as the waterfall and how to um, work with the water effects. Um, for me, in, in real life, I created the lake and then I went to apply the grass with the grass master and later on I did the waterfall. Um, doesn't matter for you because you can do all the water together, lakes, waterfall and water effects and the electrostatic flocking will be um, applied afterwards. For me it was just a little easier for the video tutorial to uh, differ these steps. So don't mind if you see some grass in the background that is uh, that just appeared there somehow. I will show you in the next chapter how that will work in the grass flocking chapter. So don't mind at the moment, um, just go on with the, with the water and finish this step first. Um, two more tips for you. If you use the hot um, air gun, make sure to open your windows or even to work outside on the balcony maybe um, because I really managed to um, yeah to set the fire alert here in our um, flat. I uh, really used that hot gun and it was a little um, steam or something that came out of the gun and my fire alert went down so um, yeah I 
worked on the balcony later on but uh, that's just as a tip for you maybe you start on the balcony that's better for you and your neighbors of course so have fun here um, and enjoy the next chapter how to create water Noctorain structure paste can be scooped out of the tub with an ice cream spoon or a spatula and put on a mixing pallet. From there the terrain structure paste can be picked up with a bristle brush and applied to the landscape. The different colors are dabbed onto the surfaces and paths wet on wet. I begin with beige and add in brown and loam colored terrain structure paste. The hiking trail in the lower area will later lead through a meadow. It should therefore look more earthy. Thus I use brown as a base in this area and add in a little loam and beige. When dried later the paste will look matte and like a rough textured surface. This makes it ideal for designing natural looking paths and areas. Now the lake bed will be colored. The Noch riverbed color set is suitable for this. It consists of a brighter, neutral acrylic paint, as well as three color concentrates in blue, green and brown. The brightener solely serves as a substrate for the colors, drying out transparent later. You have to bear this in mind when mixing the color, as it will come out darker than the color mixture suggests. We therefore first mix together the blue, green and brown color concentrates to create the desired color. Then we add about the same amount of brightener. Blue and green Noch acrylic paint are the ideal supplement. Before use, we stir the paint with a stirrer. Before we start painting the lake bed, we clean it with a brush and a hoover. The diorama is then prepared for paint application. We begin the paint application with the riverbed color set and mix in a little acrylic paint bit by bit. Mixing takes place wet on wet again, directly onto the ground. This produces gentle color gradients. Legs are usually deeper in the middle than at the edges. We achieve this effect by starting with the paint application from the middle and getting lighter and lighter towards the outside. You can mix several layers of paint over each other until your lake has the desired color. But don't put the green acrylic paint out of reach yet. We will use it to prime the surfaces that will later be furnished with grass fibers. It's important to pay close attention to how far you take the painting of the rocky sections, paths and the building footprint. If in doubt, leave a little space in the transition areas. Make sure that no white areas can be seen after applying the green shade. The diorama then must be completely painted. In the next step we start decorating our landscape. Rubble and gravel should be affixed to steep slopes and in the shore area. In order to be able to work quickly and purposefully we first prepare all the materials. The Noch grass glue tub is opened and the insert set aside. Gravel and rubble are poured into the Noch Profi Shaker or into a glass. 
the atomizer is screwed directly onto the Noch landscaping spray bottle. In order to fix gravel and rubble on the ground, a thin layer of grass glue is first applied below the rock overhang. A few medium sized chunks of rubble are scattered onto the glue. Finer pieces of rubble then follow. The Profi Shaker is then used to scatter gravel over the rubble. It is finer and therefore falls into the gaps in between. Rubble and gravel can be brought into shape with a brush. The footprint to be left free for the building is thus swept free. The process of adding rubble and gravel can be repeated as desired until the rock deposit on the slope and under the overhang is obtained the desired shape. In order to glue and fix rubble and gravel together, everything is sprayed with Noch landscaping spray glue. The spray glue dries transparent. Although, should too much spray glue be applied to the edges, it can be carefully removed with kitchen roll. We then create the shore area in the same way. Gravel and rubble must be attached and fixed particularly carefully here, since the water drops will be poured in later and there shouldn't be any loose stones in the lake bed. Kitchen roll can be of great help when fixing rubble and gravel with the landscaping spray glue. In this way, we prevent large areas of the rocks from being sprayed with the glue and thus preserve their beautiful surface structure and coloring. We then also remove any excess glue from the lake bed with kitchen roll. Rubble and gravel are also applied in the rocky area on the peaks and at the top of the water basin. As soon as your work is complete, the glue must be firmly closed again. Press the sealing insert onto the top of the grass glue and screw the lid on tightly. To ensure that you can enjoy using your landscaping spray bottle for a long time, it is important to clean it well. Fill the empty plastic bottle with lukewarm water and drop a washing up liquid. First, clean the suction hose of spray glue with a sheet of kitchen roll. Then spray the bottle a few times with the cleaning liquid until the hose and spray head are clean. Now comes one of the most exciting subjects in the design of model waters, building a waterfall. First of all, we measure the customized length of the waterfall in the diorama. A sheet, such as a sheet protector, is affixed onto our crafting base with adhesive strips. We then transfer the length of the waterfall onto the sheet. Add approximately 1.5 cm at the top and bottom. In my case, the total length is approximately 17 cm. Noch water effects are now used. Carefully squeeze out the milky, vicious mass side by side, bit by bit, to create the rough shape of the waterfall. I make a second, slightly wider waterfall, because I'm not quite sure which width will look better in the diorama later. You pull the water effects in the current in the direction in which the water will later fall into the landscape. We allow the waterfalls to dry for approximately 2-3 to three hours and then put on another layer of water effects. This also has to dry again for 1-2 to two hours before you can model texture in the waterfall with a toothpick. If the water effects are still too liquid, the texture will dissolve again. In this case, simply repeat the process again a bit later. Apply 3 to 4 layers of water effects on top of each other, letting them dry in between. We set the finished waterfall aside 
to dry at least overnight. Once the waterfall is completely transparent, it can be carefully peeled off the sheet. Here too, it can also be to your advantage to have made two waterfalls at the same time. If one gets damaged when peeled off the sheet, there is still another one left to use in the diorama. Before we melt the Noch water drops, we have to prepare the diorama. First of all, the mountain lake and the small basin are cleaned out of dust and any impurities with a hoover. To protect the crafting table, we place paper on newspaper underneath. To be on the safe side, we protect the edges of the diorama again with masking tape. The masking tape is only for safety reasons and is meant to prevent water drops from accidentally overflowing later. The water drops are pulled up to a maximum of just below the edge of the front and side panels. Ideally, the material will not come into contact with the masking tape at all. We get a wooden board ready and plug in the hot air gun. We would like to pour Noch water drops color onto the lake bed and the small basin. Please read the instructions carefully before use and wear heat resistant gloves. Water drops are hot when processed, so there is a considerable risk of burns and injury. Take the transparent granules and three color granules in green, blue and brown, as well as the tube of plasticizer out of the water drops packaging. First. We put the entire contents of the transparent granules in a sealable, heat-resistant and oven-proof container, for example a jam jar with a lid. We then squeeze the entire plasticizer out of the tube over the granules. Mix the two components a little with a stirrer. Wipe the stirrer clean on the edge, so that no material is wasted. It is important to strictly adhere to the mixing ratio of granules and plasticizer. You must now put on the heat resistant gloves. Preheat your oven to 170 to 180 degrees Celsius on top and bottom heat. The water drops now go in the oven for 40 to 45 minutes, where they are melted. When the water drops have melted, we remove them carefully from the oven and stir the two components. Important, make sure you use a metal stirrer, for example a screwdriver, a tablespoon or a sturdy piece of wire. A stirrer made of wood or plastic could burn easily, melt or react to the heat from the water drops and thus create unattractive bubbles in the water drops. To make the water even more realistic, color now comes into play. Carefully add some color granules and keep stirring. Only add small amounts of color granules at a time and keep stirring the liquid until the desired color shade is reached. If the mask gets cold and too tough while stirring and coloring, simply put it back in the oven for a couple of minutes and then continue the process. Keep in mind the depth of your future body of water as you mix. Our lake will be around 3 mm deep. If you position the stirrer inside the glass 3 mm from the glass and look in from the outside, you will get an approximate assessment of the depth effect of your colored water. Keep adding color granules until you are satisfied with the color effect. When you have achieved your perfect watercolor, simply put everything back in the oven for about 10 minutes to remove any bubbles that may have been created by stirring. The water drops are taken out of the oven at the ideal temperature immediately before casting. Very carefully, you now pour the water drops into the basin. Then pour the water drops onto the lake bed of the mountain lake. A layer of approximately 3 mm is sufficient. Make absolutely sure that the material does not flow sideways over the edges. The water drops can be heated at the sides and liquefied with a hot air gun. 
This allows the water drops to taper off towards the shore like real water. If bubbles have formed anywhere on the surface of the lake, you can remove them with the hot air gun at the end by carefully heating the water drops at this point, thereby liquefying them again. It's also possible to repair scratches on the surface for instance. With water drops, a beautiful, smooth and very glossy surface that looks like a real mountain lake is created. Another tip. One special advantage of the water drops is that any residual amounts can be reused at any time. Simply let it cool in the glass. The best bet is to screw on a lid so that no foreign bodies or dust fall into the glass. Now set the glass aside for your next project. The waterfall should only be installed at the very end, after grass and greenery have been added to the terrain. For the sake of completeness, I'd like to show the step here in the water chapter. Before the waterfall and other water effects can be designed, the surface is cleaned thoroughly with a brush and hoover. The waterfall is fitted into the terrain. The waterfall is bent over the escarpment for fastening and affixed with a small drop of hot glue. At the bottom, it should touch down exactly at the lake and protrude a little over the top of the escarpment. The waterfall can be shortened to the desired length with scissors. Make sure that the waterfall falls 100% vertically and is not accidentally built into the landscape at a slight slant. Due to gravity, water always falls straight down. Any slight slant would look very unnatural. Now noch water effects are poured onto the surface of the water basin. They are spread on with a paintbrush. The water effects are dabbed onto the surface to form small water movements and waves. The transitions to the shores and the waterfall are also created with water effects. As a result, everything looks like it comes from one casting. A small rivulet, which is supposed to feed into the basin, is modeled directly into the rock wall with water effects. Since the water effects dry completely transparent later, you can also design small bodies of water with them. Noch waves and billows is used to create the transition between waterfall and lake. The paste is applied onto the desired spot with a spatula or wooden stick. Now you'll have to be patient because the waves and billows have to dry. As soon as the mass becomes a bit tougher, you can raise it up with a wooden spatula, toothpick and paintbrush and thus model the collapse of the waterfall into the lake. Finally, the shore area is provided with gentle waves. For this purpose, water effects are applied for the surface straight from the bottle again and then distributed with a brush. Very small waves are created by dabbing, intimidating a gentle ripple of the water at the shore. 